Now with the time at 5.15, the news from ITN. Hello. The leader of the Bosnian Serbs, Radovan Karadzic, says American threats to use airstrikes against Serb forces could scupper the Vance Owen peace plan. This evening, the Prime Minister, John Major, told Lord Owen that the plan should be implemented as quickly as possible. The Americans are insisting that the option of military intervention is still there if the Serbs continue fighting. 24 hours after the euphoria of getting a peace plan signed in Athens, comes the reality of making it stick in Bosnia. And no sooner was he back home than the leader of the Bosnian Serbs was warning that his assembly could reject the deal because of American threats. It's very bad. I mean, that may, may make me very hard time in my parliament. And that may be the cause the parliament re refused this uh, signature. But the American Secretary of State, Warren Christopher, concluding talks in London, said that only underlined his skepticism of Serb intentions. I've been very determined that uh, we continue as allies and friends to consider the options that we have before us to uh, move forward uh, in this situation and to uh, uh, turn this aggression back. So the threat of military action against the Serbs remains as the UN prepares to implement the plan. These British troops from the Prince of Wales' own Yorkshire Regiment, now in Germany, among the first to try to make it work. Stage one is an immediate and universal ceasefire. Stage two, within five days, is the withdrawal of heavy weapons, first from Sarajevo, then from all front lines. Stage three is the withdrawal of all forces to agreed boundaries within 45 days. And in Bosnia today, there was a reminder of the enormity of the task ahead, as another wave of Muslim refugees was expelled by Serbs from captured territory. For some, it was their second forced removal in a year. The longer it takes to implement the peace plan, the longer their tragedy and the tragedy of thousands like them will continue. There were angry scenes when a man charged with murdering a young mother and her baby appeared in court in Luton. David Edwards is accused of shooting Marina Turvey and her daughter Charlene. Waiting for the court to open, relatives of the man accused of killing a young mother and her daughter and the family of his alleged victims. Among them, Jonathan Turvey, who was with his wife Marina when she was gunned down in the street by a man who later also killed her daughter Charlene. Everyone was thoroughly searched as they entered court, where smartly dressed David Edwards heard the charges against him. Two counts of murdering Marina and Charlene, one of attempting to murder Jonathan. As the prosecution read out details of the charges, there was uproar in court. Jonathan Turvey lunged forward, shouting, did you hear that? I'll get you, I'll get you. He was held back by relatives, but there was more trouble at the end of the case when determined efforts were made to storm the dock to reach Edwards before he was hustled away. Anger spilt over outside the court after Edwards was remanded in custody, though this time it was directed at cameramen and reporters. Edwards' relatives hurried away. They too were clearly distressed at the events of the past three days and anxious to avoid confrontation. The case has been adjourned for a week. Jim Buchanan, ITN, Luton. A man has appeared in court charged with the murder of 35-year-old Deborah Buxton. Mrs Buxton was stabbed while walking her dogs beside the River Dove in Derbyshire last week. Derby magistrates remanded in custody 27-year-old David Bond. Mrs Buxton's husband, Ronald, was in court for the hearing. They were due to celebrate their wedding anniversary the night she was killed. Police have charged a man with hijacking a taxi and ordering the driver to take a bomb to Downing Street hours after the IRA attack on the City of London. The minicab driver abandoned his car and the bomb exploded near King's Cross in central London. It's thought that the specific charge relates to the minicab bomb which exploded in central London eight days ago. In one of two hijackings that night, the driver was ordered at gunpoint to go to Downing Street. He abandoned his vehicle and alerted the police. The bomb went off while the vehicle was parked in a street near King's Cross Station. Police are still hunting the man who hijacked the second cab that night. Its driver was ordered to go to New Scotland Yard. The bomb went off outside a hotel in North London. Meanwhile, the search goes on for these two men, thought to be involved in the bomb attack at Bishopsgate, which devastated the City of London last weekend. John Gerard Matthews, who's 22 and unemployed, will appear tomorrow morning at Arbor Square Magistrates Court in East London. 
He'll face charges brought under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Peter Sharp, ITN, at New Scotland Yard. American investigators have identified the body of the cult leader David Koresh among the people who died in the Waco fire. He'd been shot in the head. It's not clear if Koresh was killed or took his own life. Police have confirmed he died before the fire engulfed the Branch Davidian compound. It ends speculation that he may have escaped. A father is to challenge the health secretary, Virginia Bottomley, in the High Court over his son's right to have a life-saving operation. Health officials have closed the hospital unit where the boy, Reese Daniels, was to have a bone marrow transplant. He doesn't know it, but the next six months are critical for little Reese Daniels. He suffers from the rare Batten's disease, which leads to dementia, blindness and death by the age of seven. His sister Charlie has the disorder too. She has less than two years to live. Reese's only chance is a bone marrow transplant before he develops symptoms later this year. A donor had been found, but last month the specialist unit at Westminster Children's Hospital was shut down. Because the government decided to close a unit, or close a hospital and close the unit, uh, that, that unit was my, my, my son's only chance of survival. Maybe a slim chance, but it, it was a chance. Barry Daniels has now turned to the courts to save his son. A successful action against Health Secretary Virginia Bottomley would force health officials to provide the treatment. I don't think he's aware of, of the situation. He just uh, he enjoys life at the moment, and uh, we just want him to continue to enjoy it, don't we, mate? Mr Daniels' concern now is his action could take time, something Reese has precious little of. Steve Scott, ITN, Epping. Viscount Lindley, the son of Princess Margaret, is to marry this autumn. His bride-to-be is 23-year-old Serena Stanhope. The Queen and other members of the royal family are said to be delighted. Serena Stanhope is the daughter of Viscount Petersham and the former Irish show jumper Virginia Freeman Jackson. Snooker and Stephen Hendry has won the Embassy World Championship for the third time. He beat Jimmy White convincingly 18 frames to five. It was White's fifth appearance in the World Championship Finals and his fifth defeat. Cricket and in the opening tour match between Australia and Middlesex, Middlesex have scored 81 for four off 25 overs. They're chasing Australia's total of 243 for five. That's it. Tonight's late news is at 11 o'clock. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>
In the dock, David Edwards, accused of murdering Marina Turvey and Charlene Turvey, the couple's seven-month-old daughter. Before the hearing, John Turvey sat in court shaking violently. There was uproar in the public gallery when Edwards was led into the dock. As the two charges of murder and one of attempted murder were read out, Mr Turvey shouted, Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'll get you. He had to be restrained by members of his family. As Edwards was remanded in custody for a week, there was more shouting and screaming from relatives of the victims, many of them in tears. Edwards' family hurried from the court immediately after the hearing. A few minutes later, the Turvey family emerged, still overcome by anger and grief. Their target now, waiting newsmen. The private anguish of the last three days now expressed in public. Police moved in to restore order as John Turvey tried to comfort his relatives. In Luton, this is Simon Harris for London Tonight. Other news now. A 22-year-old man has been charged with causing an explosion just hours after the City of London bomb 10 days ago. The charge relates to a minicab bomb which exploded in Hoburn. It's believed the taxi was heading for Downing Street. John Gerard Matthews will appear before Arbour Square magistrates in East London tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, three people who Scotland Yard were questioning in connection with the City of London bombing have been released. None of them were charged. One was returned to prison from where he'd escaped. In High Wycombe, a man has appeared in court charged with murdering the missing millionaire David Martin. The electronics tycoon vanished from his home at Knapp Hill near High Wycombe last December. Mr Martin's business partner is accused of killing him. 49-year-old Colin James from Mill Hill in North London was remanded in custody. A gang of youths are being urged to seek medical attention tonight. They spilt two litres of a chemical suspected of causing cancer at a building site in Wandsworth. The youths smashed a JCB into a mobile building which contained the chemical. The fluid is used to treat metal. Police are concerned the youths may have inhaled it. Firefighters have been tackling a massive blaze at a rifle range in Bisley, Surrey. Attempts to put out the fire were hampered by World War II bombs known to be in the area. It took 40 hours to put out the blaze. An area of land two miles by one and a half miles was destroyed. And finally, 1993 will go down in the history books if the government have their way this week. Today is likely to be the last May Day bank holiday. Mark Jordan has been sampling the delights of the traditional day off. Don't be deceived by the bells on their legs. Morris men are angry about government plans to scrap May Day. There are certainly some angry people around. That is there such shot. thing as a militant Morris man? Uh, well, I know a few are heading that way. Amid the fun of the fair, Marxists too were working hard for the toiling masses. May Day, we're going to fight for working class politics. But across at the DIY store, it wasn't the evil capitalists cracking the whip. There's the slave driver sitting in the car, which is the wife, you see. You're not allowed to not work on May Day. <laughs> Well, it's here in this lovely West London park that London's anarchists had advertised a May Day picnic. Problem is, they seem not to have been able to agree on time or place. We can't find them. Back at the fair, a little investigative journalism. Do you stick them down? No. Honest? Honest. So will they win their day, or is this goodbye May Day? At Hounslow Fair, where you get a nicer type of young joyrider, this is Mark Jordan for London Tonight. The joys of the bank holiday. Well, that's all from me. London Tonight is back at 20 past 11 this evening. Until then, goodbye. Sky is expected to clear. We are in for a cold night. Lowest temperatures between 1 and 5 degrees Celsius, so ground frost should be expected. As for tomorrow, it's going to be dry and mainly sunny. Top temperatures around 15 degrees Celsius. That's 59 Fahrenheit. <laughs>